everybody and welcome to the Kuno Coaching Podcast. Today I've got an amazing guest with me. It's Wendy Nichols from the, well, she is actually the founder of The Infinity Coach. Wendy, how are you doing? Thank you. I'm really well, Marie. Thank you so much for inviting me along today. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, I'm really keen to kind of get into talking about everything leadership as I normally am. Um, but would you like to kind of, you know, give an overview of uh, what you do now and what you've done to get there in your career journey? Yes, absolutely. So this year, literally the start of this year, um, I founded the Affinity Coach. Um, I've been working in leadership and management development for the whole of my career. And first as, as, a, you know, as, a, as a manager and a leader within a financial services organization. And then I moved into training and development, which I absolutely loved. And I was really, really passionate about really early in my career. So I have stayed in leadership and management development my whole career um, and unfortunately I was made redundant at the end of the year um, and I thought right this is a great opportunity um, to start out on you know on my own um, and continue doing the coaching that I really really love with people and and and, and being able to help them so that's how I, that's how I got to um, you know to set up my business at the beginning of the year. And you're an accredited coach aren't you? Do you want to talk us through how you become accredited and what that means? Yes, yeah, so I've done, I did my coach training um, a number of years ago. Um, and as part of that, I didn't follow up with the actual accreditation. So you've got the, the training bit and then you've got the accreditation. And what that involves is logging all of what you learn from doing your coaching. So it's based on a number of coaching hours. So you get accredited at different levels, depending on how much experience as a coach you have. Um, and you have your continuing professional development. So you demonstrate your ongoing learning and you also demonstrate that you are learning from coaching. And we do that through supervision. Um, so we, we get together regularly with um, a coach supervisor. And so you're recording and you're documenting as you're going how, you know, what you're learning through your coaching, how you are adapting and evolving as a coach. And, you know, and, and what you do to, to get the accreditation is you submit all of this documentation and then they come back with, with some feedback for you and, uh, and give you the accreditation if they think that you've done that sufficiently. So, yes, yeah, so delighted. I'm accredited with the European Mentoring and Coaching Council at practitioner level. And my next step will be to go for my senior practitioner level, which will probably be, I hope, in the next sort of 12 to 18 months or so. When you're um, doing kind of accreditation and, and being, you know, on this development journey as a coach, is it kind of the same as leadership where you have to really start to look inwardly in order to uh, perfect the skills that you need to help others? Oh, absolutely. When I, when I first did, because I've done a coaching approach as a manager, um, I always took a coaching approach with the people that I was leading, but it wasn't until I really did my coaching qualification that you start to really dig deep into who are you and how do you coach? As coaches, we're all very, very, very different. We draw on our own individual experience and they do say that who you are is how you coach. And so there's learning the how to, how to ask really great, clean, incisive questions for people just to unlock what is in them. And sometimes that's what it is. You're hoping to unblock and unlock something that is in inside that person so being a coach is not about you know prescribing a particular pill or recommending a solution it's all about the individual having that within them and my role as a coach is to help them find it and so there's there's the coach training which teaches you you know different methods different ways of being a coach so you know we do some stuff around creative methods and some drawing and using pictures and cards and, 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 and other ways of getting people not just to sit at a desk and have a conversation, but to start to think about things and put a different lens or a different perspective on their situation. And so, so you, you learn some of those techniques and your evolution as a coach is about really finding what works for you, what things are you really comfortable with, what helps you to listen with that great intent to be able to help the other person. Um, so, you know, we, we do everything as coaches in service of the people that are our clients. 
you know, it's it's about what's best for them. It's not about us saying, well, I think you should do this, 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 and this, and here's, you know, here's 10 things which are going to change your life. And these five things are going to help with your career. It's not that, but we have a toolbox of you know, things we might recommend. So if somebody really, really is stuck, of course I'll I might say, you know, here's something that might have helped me or has helped a previous person. I'll, I'll, I'll offer that as an invitation. Here you go. Here's maybe some useful information. What do you think of that? How does that relate to you? And, you know, and where you are right now, you know, ref, you know give people opportunity to reflect and then be able to draw their own conclusions about what's right for them. That's really interesting that you say leadership is coaching, because I think when I reflect on it, my leadership's probably been more coaching um, as well to try and get the best out of a team. Mm -hmm. If you've got um, a large team, um, are there any approaches that that you recommend to take when you're trying to kind of coach and develop your team? I think we, yes, I, I, at, a, at a previous in, in a previous role, I wrote a course on how to empower individuals. And I think there's something about having great coaching conversation, which helps you as a leader to recognize where your team is. So if they may be looking for the next challenge, well, how much of a challenge, how much more responsibility do they want to take on? Where's their comfort zone and where can that stretch a little bit? You know, where, where do they want to see themselves? What's right for them at this moment? As you know, any, any leader, any manager will know that their team members are all very different. They've all got very different drivers, motivations and aspirations. And so it's definitely not one size fits all. So taking that coaching approach means that you're the one asking the questions and you know, your, your, your team is, is the one that's making up the, you know, their minds for what's right for them as well. And then as a leader, of course, you're providing you know, that added direction of, well, this is where we want to get to, but how do you see us as a team in, in being able to, to reach that? If you take on um, a new team, and I've had this discussion a few times recently with people, and there can be all kinds of things going on in, in a new team that um, that pre-existed before you took it over and you might be taking it over. What would you suggest is the best way to kind of approach this, given that there could be anything currently going on within that team that you're taking over? Um, my biggest recommendation is around the conversations. It's a it's unlocking the conversations and creating an environment where people feel safe to be able to express what they truly believe and what they truly think. And whether whether that's hard or whether they think, do you know what this you know this situation that we're in is rubbish, but I've got a few ideas. Maybe they've not been listened to in the past. Most most of the time, I have found that teams who really work together and who can be truthful and honest and feel safe in showing their level of vulnerability. Those are the teams that can help one another to thrive and flourish. And of course, you know, as, as you know, I'm really, you know, I'm really dedicated to thinking about people's resilience and well-being. And so, a, you know, a team that does that will also be looking out for one another to be able to support each other when things are going tough, which means it's OK then for individuals to go in and go, do you know what, I'm having a really rough time right now and I need I need the support of the team as opposed to putting a brave face on it and just pretending everything's okay. So resilience is an interesting concept and a lot of people mm -hmm. think that that is putting a brave face on it and turning up and leaving everything outside. What would yeah. you say resilience really is? Oh, well, I've, I've done a lot of research into resilience. I became a resilience coach a couple of years ago. And I think there, there are a number of myths around resilience, but one of the things that I've learned over the past few years is about people's definition of resilience so a lot of people would describe resilience as it's bouncing back it's it's being able to stretch and then return back to where you were or it's being able like you say to just to power through in the face of adversity or you know just to be able to just to carry on you know like you say put a brave face on it for me resilience is more about learning to grow and adapt and being able to you know, being able to change. Now, for some of us in some circumstances, that is simply not possible. So the, another thing I've learned about resilience is that it's so dynamic. 
one day we'll have the energy to be able to put that into our learning and our growth. And at other times, we may simply be in a situation where we don't have that capacity to be able to do that. You know, and just getting by day to day is where we're at. And that's a, that's a good thing. What we also recognize is that there are some times where our resilience might be that bit lower and things are going so well for us. So what we might need is the support. Sometimes it's professional help that we might need, but sometimes it's the support of others to go, do you know what? You're not crazy. You're not going mad. You are normal, you are human, and this is a natural response to it, and it's okay, and we're here to support you. It's also important then as part of resilience to learn what's not working currently, and to then start to think about what could I change, making small incremental steps, incremental changes, so that, so that you can get back onto an even keel and learn and grow and not slip back into potential habits or you know or ways of doing things that didn't serve you well before and that's what i help a lot of people in coaching with some of that's about their own expectations of themselves so they'll run themselves into the ground because they believe i'm a parent and a, you know and i and an employee and therefore i've got to do both of these things to the very very best of my ability and i've also got to be a perfect friend and a perfect spouse and there's no room for them in there. I remember having a, a coaching conversation with somebody once and you know, she had a very, very busy life, a senior manager, looking after her team, putting the team first, putting her family above you know, everything else outside of work. And when I said, when do you take 15 minutes just for you? Just 15 minutes. And, and she looked at me and she said, never. Never take just 15 minutes for me. And I said, try to start by just doing that once a week. Even if all you do is just sit down or lay down on the bed, close your eyes and just try to forget everything. Just take 15 minutes just to rest, just for you. Um, and initially that, that was an alien concept. That was, that was, but I've got so many things to do. I've got this to do, I've got that to do. And, you know, and, and when we are in that hamster wheel, sometimes just taking 10 minutes whether it's to go for a walk, whether it's literally just sit and close your eyes, that's probably the best thing at that moment in time. You're listening to the Kuno podcast. If you want to ask a question to our experts, just go to kunocoaching.com and you will find the link to the podcast where you can leave us a voice message or send us an email and we will ask your question direct to the expert. That's kunocoaching.com. Kuinua Coaching is set up to offer mentoring, coaching and courses in leadership, negotiation and soft skills. If you're interested in finding out more about what Kuinua Coaching has to offer you, you can get in touch via Facebook, Instagram, you can type Kuinua into Google, you can email us on kuinuacoaching at gmail.com or go to our website at kuinuacoaching.com. That's kuinuacoaching.com. I've got to say I'm completely guilty of that and I started to do yoga and that was the only the only half hour a week that I had to myself but once I started doing that and I got into it I realized that I actually liked having that time for kind of just meditation and just for myself and to think and that then prompted me to go on and do a few more things that, that I would like to do but it's it's so easy it's like a vortex to get sucked down into this work-life mm -hmm. non-balance and just yeah. carry on powering through and never stop Yes, absolutely. Because, you know, you can never get to the end of your emails, you can never get to the end of everything that you need to do. So, you know, where, where do you find the time for you? And it's that analogy that a lot of people are very familiar with now about the oxygen mask on a plane. When we get on a plane, when we're allowed to, of course, um, when you get on a plane, you're told to put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you help others, because you know, you, you, you need to take care of yourself. So be, you know, your own well-being isn't a selfish thing. But of course, you know, often we are taught to put others before ourselves, to take care of the needs of other people. Sometimes that is absolutely the right thing to do. So I'm not saying that we can, you know, we can drop everything and say, well, no, this is for my well-being. But we sometimes do need to reevaluate the boundaries and say, you know, even if it, this is my half an hour for yoga or, you know, my half an hour for a bike ride, which is exactly what I did this morning, um, was I, you know, I went for a bike ride, just five and a half miles. I'm not that fast. 
um, but just half an hour to get outside. And because you're doing that, that's the only thing that you can do. You know, you know and, 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 and I'm also in my spare time, not that I have a huge amount, but I'm also an Action for Happiness volunteer. And with a couple of other ladies in Swindon, I lead the Action for Happiness group. Um, and so there are groups for Action for Happiness everywhere. So we look at the power of positive psychology and each month has a theme. And uh, in one of the months we were talking about being active and what a gift it is to be able to go out and do something active and that that's the only thing that, that you should be doing. And it's like if you have 10 minutes walk, one of the great enablers of resilience is about being mindful and being present. And if you can leave the tech at home and just go for a walk, if that's possible, appreciate not for, it's not for everybody, but if you can go for a walk and just start to notice things, you know, if you can get out into nature, which of course, you know, was the theme for um, well-being week uh, or mental health week, um, you know, it's been about connecting with nature. And for so many people that I've spoken to, that has been one of the things that really got them through lockdown was going out and just being able to walk and be in nature and sense the birds and squirrels and you know just life and growth and being able to experience that and, and so that is so important for our well-being is that time so like i say whether whether it is that you just want to sit on the bed and just go right this is 10 minutes for me whether you want to put on some music and dance about and re-energize yourself it's it's important that you pick something that you really want to do not something that becomes a slog. I, I think it's so powerful actually to be outside in nature. I think just that kind of walking barefoot in the grass and listening to the birds and just not having your phone anywhere near you and being able to just reconnect to everything and to the world is, is just fantastic. It really does bring you back into the present. Yes. And, uh, and a lot of people, you know, even before the lockdown, you know, back in 2019, people were taking lunchtime walks, whereas they may have sat at desks, um, you know, all day during the day. And people have continued that whilst they've worked from home. They've deliberately taken a break so that they can get away from, you know, the work environment and create a little bit more alignment and balance for themselves. That's actually a really interesting thing because lunch breaks, it's really tempting to sit at the desk and just carry on and just do this bit more and just do this bit more then that spreads into I'll just stay half an hour later to finish this and then I'll come in half an hour later to do this and by the time you know it and this was me I had a stomach ulcer and then I was completely stressed out and I had to like properly slow down and you just think how did that happen but it's all about I think reevaluating your boundaries and understanding what you're doing and checking in with yourself and making sure that you're not actually letting yourself go beyond these boundaries you are actually taking time for yourself it's why do you think it is that the first thing that disappears is is taking time for ourselves I, I do you know what it's, it's different for us all Marie we you know we might have been taught you know that you know that we should be there for others um you know the asking for help might be bad the you know it might be our own expectations that well this is my job and therefore i should be doing it and some of that comes down to the language that we use you know the musts i must do this i should do this i ought to do that and for for some of my clients it's been about reevaluating that language and their own expectations on themselves that then helps them to think about well what what am I doing? What's my purpose? Potentially, I mean, that's not for everybody, but what's my purpose? What do I really want my, my life, my work to be about? Where, where am I going to put my energy? And, and for some, it's about just saying, do you know what? I can't do everything. And that comes back to being the perfect friend, being the perfect partner, being the perfect parent, which of course none of us are. Um, and, and being able to you know, be, be effective as an employee. And, and I think one of the things that I did notice when, when people were working from home, and particularly those amazing parents that were doing homeschooling as well, were also beating themselves up because they just couldn't do everything. And so one of the messages that we were giving to people at that time was be kind to yourself, give yourself a break. You are not superhuman. And you know, there is only 100% of you. And you still need to take care of yourself. Otherwise, that 100% is going to diminish quite quick. 
And um, one of it was it was an interesting saying that that I heard once, which was, if we don't make way for our good health, if we don't take care of our good health, then we'd better be ready for poor health because that will come. Oh yeah, it does, and and I can really empathize with the parents that were doing homeschooling because I do math tuition and being an a, you know an ex teacher I find it hard when kids come to me with just a problem off you know out of nowhere and these parents are having to teach everything so I've got a huge amount of empathy and respect oh, for people doing that absolutely well done to all of them really you know they do they all deserve a massive pat on the back as does everyone who you know who really pulled you know you know pulled out everything um, you know, to be able to get us through, you know, in the way in the way that we have done, um, and on our hopefully on our way, fingers crossed, back to back to a more normal life. So we're coming up to the end of the interview. What would your kind of final thoughts and top tips be for our listeners? Um, I would there 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 are a few top tips. One is pay attention to to yourself. Pay attention to those moments when you're tired. Pay attention to when you just don't have the energy to do something. Sometimes it is great. It is really good advice to say, well, even if you don't want to go out for a walk, make yourself go because then you'll find that that movement will create endorphins, might make you feel better, uh, will give you a little bit more mental energy, will help with the emotional energy. So there is some really good advice there, but there's also listen to yourself. If you really don't want to do it, don't do it. But pay attention to your whole well-being that's around connections with others it's also about asking for help um, don't be afraid to ask for help which comes back to the action for happiness one of the things that we talked about as well in another session was giving people the gift of helping because if, i'm sure you're like me marie if somebody asks me for help i really want to help them i really want to help them and that was probably one of the reasons i got into a, being a coach and a facilitator and trainer anyway was to help people um, I love to help people. So if people ask me for help, I'm more than happy to give it. But guess what? I'm useless at asking for help off of others. But it is actually a gift. So if I go to my friends and I say, can you help me with this? They're delighted to. And the same with the communities and, and the families that we're in and, and, you know, and the teams that we're in. The vast majority, if you ask for help, they really want to give it because you know, it's all, that's all about making us feel really positive as well. When we've done good, we feel good. So, yeah, ask for help. People, people want to help, genuinely. But remember to say no. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Yes, yeah, and I think, yeah, you are absolutely <laughs> right. And that, 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 does, that speaks volumes to what you were saying about boundaries. So that if you've got something planned in your diary, like your yoga or my bike ride, it might be, well, I can't help you right now, but I can help you when I come back, or this might not be the right time. You know, th there may be another way or another person that could help you even better than I could. So you're absolutely right. Learning to say no is really good for our well-being as well. It gives us a, a, our own sense of self and our own sense of self-esteem too. Would you like to let our listeners know where they can find you on the internet? Absolutely, yes. You can look me up on LinkedIn. So you can either find my page, which is called The Affinity Coach, or look for me, um, Wendy Nichols, um, as a leadership coach, and also on my website, which you've got a link to, haven't you? And everything will be down below. So for the YouTube people and everybody on podcasts, everything is linked down below. So you can click straight through and find Wendy. Um, thank you so much for being a guest today, Wendy. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. That's been really, it's been really great talking to you, Marie. Yes. And if people want to get in touch, it's really, really easy. You've just, I've just got a contact link and people can just book 15, 20 minutes or 30 minutes with me. You've been watching on YouTube or listening on an audio platform to the Kuno podcast. If you like what you're hearing, then don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any amazing content and don't forget to leave us a review. Kuno coaching.